Good morning, friends. Hey, you'll notice no hat. But I'm going to keep it up anyway. I'm going to keep making videos, even though I lost that hat. Might find it again. Remember this rattle. This has been showing up. This looks like a pretty old toy. It's got old tape on it, and I don't remember where I got it. But the main event of this video is I'm going to untape it for the first time ever. And live on camera, I'm going to pour out the content, which I believe are all individual little balls in the CCP arrangement. Face-centered, cubic, IBM, and so forth. What we talk about here a lot on this channel. Now, you can think that I'm trying to like change how we do education in America, or change it in my zip code, or change it somewhere in between. But really, it's more when you want to demonstrate a useful curriculum, you need a school, which we have, School of Tomorrow, it's here online, and you need to just sort of showcase what your school is, and so that's all I'm doing. And I use the curriculum that I use, and you can see for yourself what memes in there do you want to pull out. What of my curriculum or this curriculum is going to be useful to you in your life and your circumstances. I'm not saying you got to pack your bags and go to some like little Quaker horse camp school up in the boonies with all these like NSA looking bubble domes, planetariums, all this high tech ATVs, electric ATVs all-terrain vehicles. I'm not saying you're going to have that or need that to do what I'm doing. But let's just let's just keep it realistic. I think schools need to compete at the level of curriculum. In other words, when you're distinguishing yourself from other schools in the catalog, people could go anywhere. Your school is known for its interesting, different, unique curriculum. So people go because of the curriculum. And it's not just the curriculum, right? It's what skills go with it. Like, uh, is there ropes training? Do you climb mountains? Are there really horses? I have videos on the question of horses. I also do place-based education. Right now, I'm not in such a place that I just described with electric ATVs. I'm in Portland, Oregon, and in the midst of a pretty sophisticated regional transportation system which I'd say is somewhat the brainchild of something we call Metro. But of course, um, TriMet is the local yokel. They're the ones that um, implement the transportation plan, TriMet. So I was looking at a TriMet commercial. They're advertising for a new regional director, and I noticed at about 20 seconds a picture that looks so not TriMet, and I was convinced I was looking back east coast, looks like Gotham to me. Looks like more like Conrail, right? And so if you've been to the east coast, if you're from there and you know the transportation system there, what I'm about to show you, I think, is going to look rather Conrail-esque to you, right? With a conductor like that and, and seats that go back and forth, this car looks straight out of Conrail. And offhand, I didn't recognize the subway map or whatever that color-coded map over on the left was where is that so i'm like saying this can't be the portland that i know where is that map from i made it like a test but people got back to me and said actually that is a local line it's called the west west w-e-s commuter rail and i just haven't been on it right so my dad worked for metro or at least he worked on 50-year plans for portland before he left in the 60s to go to the Philipp uh, not the Philippines, to work for Libya, Libya. And so we lived in Rome, started out in EUR. So what is this wine that I'm drinking? This is not a wine commercial, but I do feature products. My friend Jerome, who works at Fred Myers, recommended this to me for a good wine under $13, under $15. I think it is about $13. And um, I've been enjoying it. I think it's a good one. And I think it is the right wine. I need a liquid that has contrast. So what we're doing on this channel is we're in that Quaker school I described. We probably have an international cast of students and teachers, right? Because that's always the idea, to help the future generations network, get along. So when they grow up and they're, 
you know, there are mob psychologies that would push for war. These kids who all study together aren't that keen. Now, a little ball already fell out. This is going to be tricky. I'm afraid of getting balls all over the place. I'm going to pour them into a cube. And given the volume relationships, I expect about a one-third full. I'd like to do this for you to see it, though. Can I hold it up here and do it? Here we go. Listen for the noise. I think I'm doing okay. I haven't spilled any yet. This is a big deal. When you do it with little kids, you might be tempted to use rice or some other fine grain thing. Because what we do in our curriculum, that should only be like a third full. It looks more than that. But on the other hand, that tetrahedron is a little bit bigger than if it were to fill exactly a third. If it were going to fill exactly a third of the cube, then the relationship I would expect is that the edge of the tetrahedron be the same length as the uh, face of the cube, the cube face diagonal, but it's a little bit longer, and so it's a little bit um, fuller. I'm going to finish taking the rest of this plastic off, and now comes the fun part where we pour wine in here. Now the idea here is similar to the Utrigon. If you remember that Wayne Phillips website, he figured out to his own satisfaction that if you do like 5 times 3 and close the lid, then that area is what? 3 times 5, 15. Not unit squares, but unit triangles. Right? And it was like these little 60 degree triangles that I show you a lot. Right? The Utrigon was his uh, ETUs were his major uh, unit of surface area. But he didn't, as far as we know yet, I've met some of his fans thanks to the YouTubes and stuff. I don't think he took it to volume. I don't think he... I'm scraping the tape off this thing. I've never opened this before. Uh, he didn't take it to where uh, the same rule applies to volumes. If I do 2 times 3 times 2 again, or let's... yeah, that would be just multiply them together, right? I'd have to tilt it a little bit. In other words, 2 times 3 times 2, that would be 4 times 3, that would be a volume of 12. Let's shoot for a volume of 12. I'm just going to calibrate it in my own head. Actually, I'm going to start by saying that could be like um, 4. That could be 2 by 2, 2 times 2 times 2. Oh, now that would be 8. So that's 8 unit tetrahedra of wine. And so let's go up to... 3 times 3 times 3, 9, would be like that. And 4 times 4 times 4, 16. 4 times 4 times 4 is not 16. 4 times, let's see. And 3 times 3 times 3 is not 9. I'm sorry, we're doing third powering here. 27 and 64, my bad. Not faces anymore. Okay, so let's say this is 64. That's a volume of 64. Now, if I were to tilt this in different ways, you would get different vector lengths. You'd get A times B times C. But as you can see, the liquid is not coming out. If it did, it would spill on my keyboard, and that would be bad. So we know the total here is 64. So that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 64. And so if I tilt it so that like this edge is all the way to 8, then the others would be 2 times 2, or no, 8 to 64 is 8. Wait. Yeah, so it would be 8 and the second root of 8 for each of the two other two edges, which we don't like. So more like 8 times 4 times 2. Yeah, so tilt it more like that. 8 times 4 times 2. Anyway, you get the idea of what we're doing here. It sounds like I might not be the fastest AA battery in the forest that I took so long to figure out the math. But um, it's because I lost my hat. I do have a Lesotho hat from Africa. If I want to like change ethnicities a little more, 
I can work on that. We do study anthropology, and that doesn't mean that we study other people, just other people. Like, we're all subjects of anthropology. So when you turn it on yourself, that starts to be like almost philosophy at that point. So anthropology applied to your own people gets you into, like, why don't we multiply that way? Why don't we take the topological primitive shape and make it be our unit of volume in some way? And then it divides into this three times, divides into the rhombic dodecahedron six times. This is a space filler, as Kepler knew. I mean, we could have a wonderful little civilization, maybe, based on these other choices. But we don't experiment, we don't look at it as a possibility because we know that we can't change the whole world at once, especially in a short amount of time. But we can offer a quirky curriculum, right? Somewhere off in the mountains, we can call it digital math, right? Heuristics for teachers will take you there. Like, while we're changing how we teach math, first of all, we can keep a lot of the conventional stuff. No reason to throw it out. But why not divide everything up differently? In this particular school, not in the whole world, we have supermarket math where we keep kind of a systems approach. We understand inventory. We understand you know, databases and websites and all the stuff that goes with like marketing, distribution, logistics, trucking. And then we have Neolithic math, which is just looking back all the far back as we can go. And what turns out to be a common thread is the time dimension. We all can relate to that we're on a planet with rhythms, calendar, solar, lunar, astronomy, okay? Then going on the other side of supermarket math, sort of in the current time, is casino math. Now, I can hear a lot of ethnicities like they don't like alcohol either. They don't like gambling. So this all seems, you know, but you can adapt. Like I said, this is just one tiny little microcosm, and you're welcome to take from it ideas. And then back home. So Martian math is the stuff I've been harping on here with the volumes. If you've been with this channel for a while, that very same cube, right? This one turns into this. Same dimensions will say I can explode it, right? Into modules like this, right? We've been doing that kind of stuff. Dissecting things. It's all part of Martian math and that's got a little bit of an alien flavor to it. In other words, one reason we call it Martian is because you don't remember it from your school, but is it ethical to withhold it going forward? You have one of the great futurists of our time pointing the way forward. We don't all have to follow that, but is it okay to not follow it at all and make a concerted effort not to all the way around? See there, I don't think that's probably ethical or wise. So we're filling a niche with this curriculum and uh, it's already online and it's already running. This is it. So it's not like I'm waiting to do this. No, this is what we're doing, right? So I'm one of the teachers. You'll find others. And if we do get a campus up in the hinterlands with the H uh, extreme remote living re and training in that direction, you know, um, if I'm involved in it, obviously I'll let you know if I'm like there or something. In the meantime, I'm just planning with people, planning. All right, stop recording. Talk to you soon.